Uh, we started no-tilling in the 1980s and, and probably the 1985 farm bill really probably made it so we knew um, that we needed to go in that direction. Um, I hate to say it, but the government kind of mandated that we keep so much uh, residue on top of the ground and it's probably the best thing that ever happened to us. That's really what's made our operation work so well. I really just think it's the best of everything as far as whether it's the amount of time you spend out there working and, and utilizing every drop of water or keeping the soil intact and increased organic matter. Just doing a better job of keeping the environment cleaner without having runoff or leaching fertilizer down into the water table. There's one thing after another that we see the advantages of no-till compared to conventional till. There is a, um, a lot of, quite a learning curve to, uh, to get into the no-till back in the 80s, but now I feel like there's just, you know, there's more things out there to make it easier. And I like to tell most people, it's not something that you can go in the first year and just everything works great. It starts with a combine to make sure your residue is evenly spread in the field so you don't have some problems with planting the next year. I like to keep the residue attached so it can't blow around or be washed from a heavy rain and that can cause real problems that it would kind of get in windrows if you would, uh, would call it that. People need to start and realize that it's, it's something that takes a few years to really see the benefits of it and then building the organic matter is the one huge thing I think that is the big advantage of no-tilling. It's just less problems with erosion, uh, less problems with compaction, uh, less problems with crusting that can happen because uh, we all know that you get hard rain and then that crust and then you've got to run the, the pivot or something to loosen up that crust and it just seems like we just have less problems with that because of no-till I think. There were some advantages we saw from the get-go. We have some real rolling ground in this area and people used to disc and, and conventionally till. Well you get a hard rain and it all runs off and so forth. But even after the first year I, I can think of a circumstance that it, uh, the ground was compacted because of some cattle that were on a, on a certain um, pivot and it was really wet that spring. And uh, we couldn't even get the seed in the ground um, because it got hard and uh, we ended up running the pivot to get the seed in the ground and, and we were wondering if we needed to loosen up the compaction or anything, but there was enough residue that was still there. That was some of our best corn. I guess that's what really set us off that after that we saw the many other advantages that come from no-tilling also. Probably something that we realized about no-till is that it can be an uh, advantage whether it's really dry or really wet. And I think this spring is a prime example of almost a tale of two type of environments. We went from being so dry that we could hardly, you know, get the seed in the ground, it was uh, that dry, to being so excessively wet. But in no-till, you kind of get the best of both worlds because in either one of those environments, no-till is the best practice to have. If you get the super dry, what moisture you do get, the no-till will conserve and you'll get the crop up and so forth. And then excessive rains, which we've seen in this area, that sometimes it can wash the crop out. But with no-till, it keeps the water from running off and so forth. Probably if I really want to analyze every aspect of no-till, one of the disadvantages that I think that some people will um, see is that the ground doesn't warm up as quickly in the spring um, because of all the residue. Sometimes you won't see the seed pop out of the ground quite as quickly. But over the years we've seen that, but it seems like by the time you get to, you know, down the road a few weeks that it evens out and you really don't see the disadvantage of that. If I have a neighbor that uh, is not no-tilling at this point, I guess I, I'd love to talk to him and just show him what I'm doing and just make him realize the advantage that I'm seeing. Now, sometimes it, it's, there's a learning curve involved with that, but I think there's just very few disadvantages, and I guess probably the biggest thing I've always heard is that they feel like there's a yield drag that can be associated with no-till. In our situation, 
I, I'm just very confident that, the, that we're seeing yield boost because of our no-till. And while even being more efficient with our equipment and everything that way and actually um, being more profitable. So it's something that I would, I would just suggest that he at least starts out with uh, a field or two and, and, uh, and see how it works for him. So we used to have a two or three discs and we used to have three or four cultivators and everything else. And now well, we have a disc that we, well, we actually share it with another farmer just because we never hardly use it, you know, just in case you have a, something that happens, a little washout or whatever it might be. Most of the equipment out there, it's not a, a huge difference from conventional to no-till. I mean, the, maybe the trash whippers, and so it's not, it's not like you got to get a whole new planter necessarily. You know, most, most planters can be adapted to no-till. As far as a lot of extra cost to switch to no-till, there just really isn't, I don't think. Um, one thing that we do is we put a, a, a device on the front of our tractor to lean the stocks so it doesn't uh, damage the tires. Tires are expensive, and if uh, the stubble can kind of cause some stubble damage to them, and we've had it for years and years, just something to lean those stocks so it doesn't poke into the tire, and um, otherwise we were having to put new tires on every year, and now it, virtually you can't tell that there's any, any damage done to the tires at all. In our operation, we really try to keep our trips down to a minimum. And basically, we just plant and spray and harvest. And spraying might be two or three times, you know, depending upon putting on the fertilizer and, and herbicides and things. The only other thing we have to do is fill in the pivot tracks that might be there. And some years, those are non-existent even. And I think that's one of the things that are beauty of, of no-till is that you don't have to be out there a lot causing compaction. and and uh, things such as that. Because of the Roundup and Goliathos and so forth, it's really made it easier for no-tilling. I think when we first started, especially when people started in the 70s and so forth uh, on dry land a little bit, there weren't the herbicides that we have today to make it uh, easier to make no-till work. And so that's something that's really played into no-till to make it easier than it used to be. So it's really, made it so we spend less hours on the tractor and so forth. It just costs less per acre to raise a crop and, and we just think that's uh, very sustainable in our, in our situation. And that's something that I think is, is important, to, especially to me, but I think the next generation and so forth, I wanna see that they have things just as good or better than I do and I think no-till fits in all those areas.